best quality of kid. Yes, sir. Genuine mocha. And the price? Five dollars a pair. Very well, I'll take them. With you, sir, or shall I send them? Perhaps you'd better send them, since I'll require one hundred dozen. One hundred dozen? On second thought, make it one hundred and ten dozen. I never like to wear a pair of gloves more than once. A superstition, you know. One hundred and ten dozen? You have my address, Sands Point, Long Island. The name is Sousa, John Philip Sousa. Thank you. Good day. Yes, sir. That, of course, was a much later Sousa, the Sousa of the 20s, composer, leader of the most famous band in the world. At the moment, however, we are concerned with another Sousa, the Sousa of the 90s, who, as a leader of the Marine Corps Band in Washington, doubtless considered himself lucky to possess even one pair of cotton gloves. Philip Sousa, principal musician, reporting, sir. How long have you been bandmaster here, Sousa? Twelve years, sir. Well, isn't that long enough to knock some sense into that bunch of German dukes and Italian counts you have in that band of yours? Uh, begging the Major's pardon, sir, what have we done now? Bring that man in here. What is your name? Private Little, sir. Private Willie Little. All right, Little, what have you got to say for yourself? Well, sir, it was like this. The Major knows how hot it was. Never mind how hot it was. We're not running the Marine Corps for your comfort. What I meant to say, sir, was, well, I was sitting there in my quarter shooting crafts when I got to thinking how nice a cold bottle of beer was. Stand at attention! Yes, sir. So I got up and I went out to the corporal of the guard and I said, Corporal, if you don't mind, I'd like to speak to the officer of the day to get permission to leave the post for 15 minutes. But he said nothing doing it for me to get my tail on back to my quarters. So I went back to my quarters again, sir. Only by now I was getting hotter and hotter and thirstier and thirstier. So you jumped over the wall and filled your belly full of rot gut liquor. I wouldn't say I filled my belly exactly full, sir, if the Major will excuse the expression. At least I could still walk when I came back. Only I've got to admit, I didn't feel much like climbing over the wall again, so I decided to come in through the main gate. And that's where you made your big mistake. Yes, sir. Because when the corporal saw me, he said something I don't let anybody say to me. So I said, I beg your pardon. And then I hit him, and he hit me back. First thing I knew, it seemed like the whole battalion was hitting somebody. Who won? They did, sir. Never mind that. Have him wait outside. Yes, sir. Now, by George, there's a real old-time Marine for you. Even if he is only in the band. But, of course, we can't let him get away with it. He'll be confined to quarters and company punishment till further notice. Yes, sir. But begging the Major's pardon, sir, there must be some mistake. That man's not of my band. How's that? I never saw him before in my life. Bring that man back in here! What's this I hear about your not being in the band? Begging the Major's pardon, sir. I didn't say I was in the band. At least, not exactly. All I said was I only joined up so as I could be in the band. Oh. Well, that's all. Yes, sir. All right, so there's been a little mistake. But that doesn't change what I said about knocking some sense into that outfit of yours. Yes, sir. Well, that's all, Susan. Uh, just a minute. What was that new march you played at retreat last night? The Washington Post march, sir. You write it? Yes, sir. That's not a bad tune. But that doesn't mean that you can waste all your time writing music. 
Remember, you've got a real job to do here. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. That's all. It was not asking too much, young man. Just what instrument do you propose to play in the band? The sousaphone, of course. The sousa what? The sousaphone. I named it after you. You don't say? Well, that's certainly very flattering. What in heaven's name is a sousaphone? Well, I guess you'd say it's a kind of tuba, sir. Only it goes more like this. Ba boom 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 Oh, yes. Sounds delightful. Yes, sir. Let's hope you can think up some other improvements for the band while you're confined to your quarters for the next four days. Me, sir? Except, of course, while you're marching eight hours a day in a circle and a full field pack. What's I that? believe those are the Major's intentions. Yes, sir. Yes, that was the Sousa of the 90s. Sergeant Major Sousa of the Marine Corps. But there was another Sousa although an enlisted man lived in his own home apart from the base. Sousa the husband, Sousa the father, Sousa the citizen. Jenny? Jenny? Coming. What in the name of all get out's been keeping you so long? I was hearing the children's prayers. Does that take all night? They were praying for you. Well, that's very thoughtful of them, but there's no need to overdo it. Jenny, I want you to hear this. It's a ballad, the best I've ever written. I joke they won't be able to change this into a march. Oh, now, stop throwing off on your marches, dear. I think they're wonderful. Of course they're wonderful. But to hear people talk, you think they're all I can write. Sit down, dear. I'll sing it for you. No, dear, you play and I'll sing. Uh, Jenny, I want you to hear this right. Uh-huh. But please, dear, not too loudly. I don't want to alarm the neighborhood. The neighborhood be hanged. Come on, just sit down and play. My love is a weeping willow Bending beside a stream She sleeps on her grassy peak hmm. Stop the same place, dear. She sleeps on her grassy pillow, deep in a lovely dream. And there, like a swallow homing, swift to her arms I fly. And there, Dear, I can't help it. <laughs> I'd like to remind you that when I was a boy, I was considered a very good singer. <laughs> oh, I'm sure of it, dear, but you're a big boy now. Maybe your voice has changed. Very funny, very funny indeed. There, take that. Uh, thank you're you. You're quite welcome. Now, just do as you're told, please. Yes, sir. Yeah. Dignified and proper, but oh, just put it down here, Nora. The pious as well. Which is more than anyone can say for you. Thank you, Nora. No sarcasm, please. Just keep playing. I need exercise. I've been cooped up in this confounded house for the past four days, and the look of this storm will be four more. Some people might call it a tuba. Boy, it's really not a tuba at all, because between you and me and the lamppost, I never did like a tuba and, and wouldn't play one if I had to. What you got against a tuba? Well, for one thing, it's it's too loud. So I had this one made with a big upright belt that lets the sound come out evenly over the whole band. 
Sort of like the frosting on a cake. Listen. What on earth? What the devil's going on out here? Oh, oh, hold on, Susan. Susan. Remember me? Private Little. I just dropped by to show you that sousaphone I was telling you about. Listen. Oh, don't do that again. You'll wake up the children. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it's quite all right, Mr. Little. The children are accustomed to strange noises in this house. I'm Mrs. Sousa. How do you do? I'm fine, ma'am. And I hope I didn't scare anybody. I just wanted Mr. Sousa to hear how good it'll sound in his band. Do you mean to say you came out in all this rain just for that? Well, not altogether, sir. What I really came by for was to see if you could go to a concert with me. To a what? Uh, to a concert, dear. That's right. On a night like this. I always say a concert sounds better if it's raining. Well, there may be some of you that. <laughs> what kind of a concert? Oh, just a concert. Some fellow's going to sing some of your songs. What fellow? Oh, you wouldn't know him, Mr. Sousa, but when I told him I was going to bring you with me, he gave me a couple of passes. The deuce he did. Yes, sir. Right down in front, too. Oh, imagine that, Philip. Right down in front. Well, really, dear, you know you can't afford to miss that. Yes, but how can I go? Didn't you say Professor Estabu was coming over to play Pinochle? Oh, I'll take care of him. You know how absent-minded he is. He won't know whether you're here or not. Now, tell me, did uh, this fellow mention what songs of mine he was going to sing? No, sir, he just said songs by John P.H. Sousa. Did he? Oh, well. I'll get your coat. Now, uh, wait a minute, Jenny. What was that funny noise, Daddy? Never mind. Now, run back to bed, all of you. But what's that thing he's got around his neck? A monstrosity. Now, scoot. Nora, will you see that they get back to bed before they catch cold? Should I give them a dose of something just in case? Oh, I don't think that's necessary. Just see that they're covered up. What's his name? Come Willie, on, not Willie Willie Little, what's yours? Priscilla Jane. Who's the big fellow next to you? John. John what? John Philip. John Philip what? Susan. Junior. She's Helen. I'm Helen. Hello, Helen. Hello. And say good night to Mr. Little, darlings, and go along with Nora like good children. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Little. Good night. Sweet dreams. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. What time does the concert start, Mr. Little? Regular time, 8.30. Oh, then you'd better hurry, Philip. But, Jenny, I have made up my mind. Yeah, this is the right thing this to do. Button up good. Well, if you're worried about us getting wet, Mrs. Susie, you needn't, because I've got a cab waiting outside. Well, you appear to have thought of everything, young man. <laughs> Just about, sir. There, now. Go along and enjoy yourself. Very well, dear. But I warn you, first I'll play my marches instead of my songs. You'll I... just get up and walk right out, dear. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Little, and thanks for letting us know in time. And do come again. Thank you, ma'am. I will. Good night. Good night. Oh, and Philip, whatever it's like, please let the singer do his own singing. You're sure this driver knows where he's going? Oh, yes, sir. We're there now. Look. This is the concert hall. Well, sir, they've got other acts, too. Young man, you lied to me. You deliberately enticed me to this dead of iniquity. Huh. However, since we're here, I suppose you might as well go in. You just pay the man and come along. Yes, sir. Here you are, driver. I've got the tickets, Mr. Susan. There's no waiting on the inside, no confusion. I congratulate you on your taste, Mr. Little, which I might add is right up my avenue. Oh, why should the spirit of mortal be proud? Like the past fitting meteor, a fast flying cloud, a flash of the lightning, the break of the wave, he passes from life to his rest in the grave. Tis but a wink of an eye or a draught of a breath on the blossom of health to the paleness of death from the gilded saloon to the beer. Get the hook and bring on the show! Right. Get that undertaker out of here! Don't pay attention to them, Mr. Sousa. I like it. Then you're an idiot, too. That fellow's voice is atrocious. He's not singing it, he's belching it. Quick in the temple, man. Bring up the music. Oh, button up. You think I'm enjoying this any more than you are? <laughs> Get the hook and bring on the ghost! The ghost! The ghost! Scoundrel, nincompoop. Let's 
get out of here before that ass makes an even bigger ass of himself. Mr. Susan, maybe the next number will be better. You lady, my songs, you ought to be gone. A little bit of this, Mr. Souza? No. Oh, just the beginning, Mr. Souza. We could sit right here. Oh, very well. I suppose there's no harm in waiting until my blood pressure goes down a bit. happens every performance. Come on. Everybody keep your seats. Let's the other pinch. Me oh. pinch? Let me hurry. Where are we going? Come on, sir. Why don't you go this way? Looks like we made it. Lil? You know this young lady? Sure, this is Miss Lily Becker. Lil, this is that friend of mine I was telling you about, Mr. Souza. Oh, I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Souza. Thank you, Miss Becker. It's always a pleasure to meet young ladies whom I find sitting on my lap. Huh. Oh, I'm sorry. Good night, John. It's been nice to have seen you again. Oh, wait, Professor, your umbrella. Oh, yes, uh, let me help you, Professor. Oh, uh, thank you. Inside, one. Philip, why are you going home so early? I didn't expect you for another hour. I'd rather come home or go to jail. Jail? That's what I said. But for the agility of my good friend here, we all might be in the calaboose at this moment. Please come in. But why? What happened? I believe the police considered it an indecent performance, I my dear. I beg your pardon? What was indecent about it? In my opinion, not a thing. I considered the exhibition as delightfully innocent as a butterfly. But apparently the bile of the sedate was upset when one of the young lady's tights had the misfortune to split. Philip, what on earth are you talking about? About tights, my dear. Tights. At a concert? Oh, this is a very extraordinary concert, Jenny. You should have been there. King Solomon gave a big blowout, the like of which you never saw. Cleopatra went sailing down the Nile to call on Caesar. Oh, by the way, this is one of the handmaidens of the Queen, Miss Lily Becker. Miss Becker, my wife. Uh, how do you do, Miss Becker? And don't mind my husband. He's just teasing. It's all right. You know, he thinks it's funny, but, but I don't happen to. And I don't have to stay anywhere and be insulted. Come on, Willie. No, no, please, no. Philip, tell her you're sorry and behave yourself. I'm sorry, Miss Becker. I apologize. You needn't bother. Wait a minute. Hadn't you better go upstairs with my wife first and see if you can find something less, uh, shall we say, revealing to put on? 
I'm not ashamed of what I'm wearing. Here's your coat. Good night. Lil, you can't go out like that. You're liable to get arrested or something. What if I do? What business is it of yours? Well, that's plenty of my business, especially after all the trouble I went to just to introduce you to Mr. Susan. Look, nobody asked you to introduce me to him. It was your big idea, not mine. Sure, but how did I know the show was going to be rated? All I was going to do was bring him backstage afterwards so as we could fix it up for him to hear you sing sometime. Oh, so that's what you were up to, eh? Yes, sir, only I couldn't tell you beforehand because how did I know you wouldn't get on your high horse and maybe not come at all? True, true. It was a gamble. Yes, sir. Do me a favor. Go jump in the river and don't come up. Lil. I don't blame you for being being angry, Miss Becker. If I were in your place, I'd be perfectly furious. But I'm sure Mr. Little didn't mean any harm. And as to hearing you sing, my husband will be delighted, won't you, Philip? If you say so, dear. When? Well, I might say Whenever that... Whenever Miss uh... Becker wishes. Well, then how about now? Come on, Lil, while he's in the mood. I'll play for you. Like, like this? Why, I think you look charming like this. Do you mind if we push the furniture back a little bit, Mrs. Souza? Oh, uh, not at all. Then how about give me a hand, Mr. Susan? Certainly, young man. Nothing will give me more pleasure. We can put this right over here, sir. How much space does she need? Not too much, sir. Oh, I'm glad of that. We're not used to having exhibitions in this room. You ready? Yeah. My daddy, you'll find this sweet and kind and loving as he can be he's gentle and shy wouldn't harm a fly but he has one peculiarity years ago poor father had sunstroke and it drove him mad every now and then he'll go off his onion don't you know yesterday he killed our cat with a blooming cricket bat but when to smother me he tried, mother and the children cried. Father's got him, father's got him, got the hike of flukes of the brain. He's walking round the houses without his coat and trousers. Whoops, father's got him coming on again. With a hatchet in his hand, he broke up the washing stand on the window ledge. He squats, chucking up the flower pots, ate a pound of bailing wire. Then he set the house on fire. Shed a tear for Sister Sue. He tried to shove her up the flue. <laughs> the table singing darling mabel father's got him yes father's got him yes father's got him coming on again oh thank you miss becker that was very nice wasn't it wasn't it philip huh? uh, yes yes very very pretty indeed I see no reason why, if Miss Becker devotes herself to study for the next four or five years, she shouldn't earn a very fair living in the theatre. But of course, as our young friend here probably forgot to tell her, I'm really no judge. After all, I'm only the leader of a brass band. Come along with me, my dear. I think I have a dress that will look very nice on you. Shall we rearrange the stage for the next act, young man? What? Oh, yes, sir. Sure. Uh, Since the days of John Adams, second president of the United States, the Marine Band has been known as the President's Own. As leader of that band, it was Sousa's privilege to serve under no fewer than five chief executives. Rutherford B. Hayes, James A. Garfield, Chester Arthur, Grover Cleveland, and Benjamin Harrison.
Senator and Mrs. Shaw. Senator. His Excellency, Lord and Lady Blair. <coughs> Lord Blair. Lady Blair. Good evening, Lord Blair. Mrs. Harris. Senator and Mrs. Kipling. Good evening, man. Mighty fine party you have. Sure beats anything you'll see out in my neck of the woods. Oh, say, have you had a chance to think over that postmaster business we were talking about last week, Mr. President? Not yet, Senator. But I You I couldn't hope... pick a better man for the job. He votes right every time. And he's got a heap of kinfolk that votes, too. Oh, and say it. Excuse me, Mr. Sousa. Yes? The president wonders if the band could play something a little more lively tonight. Why, of course, we'll be delighted. Thank you. I was under the impression he preferred chamber music. Well, he does as a rule, but there's so many long-winded office seekers here tonight. I understand. To tell the president we'll do what we can to alleviate the situation. Thank you, sir. Gentlemen, number 11. Drums, trombones, cymbals, sousaphone. what that tune is? It's Mr. Sousa's latest ballad. Ballad? Dedicated to the Marine Corps and entitled Semper Fidelis, Always Faithful. Well, it's just wonderful. Tell him he saved the day. As Secretary of Navy, it gives me great pleasure to present to you this special award in recognition of your new march, Semper Fidelis. It may interest you to know that yours is the only musical composition in the history of our country which has received the official recognition of the government. Thank you, sir. Splendid march, Mr. Sousa. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. That is, Sousa. I hope this little medal will put a stop to all the talk I've been hearing about you planning to leave the Corps. Well, that? You're not thinking of leaving the Marine Corps, Sousa. Yes, sir. But why, man? Why? Because I have five hungry mouths to feed, sir. I have no choice. But great guns, the Marine Corps won't be the Corps without Sousa. I'm sure there must be some very sound arguments against that statement, sir. But for the life of me, I can't think of a single one at the moment. Well, what are you planning to do, Sousa? Go to New York, sir, and organize my own band. But that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. With every band in the country already driving people crazy with your marches, you ought to be able to live right here in any style you want. I wish that were true, sir. But the melancholy fact is that for my three best-known marches, the Washington Post, High School Cadets, and Semper Fidelis, I received the grand total of exactly $105. The devil, you say? Exactly, sir. Oh, that, uh... What about taking the Marine Band on tour again this year? I'm sure the tour will be as successful as ever without me, sir. When do you want to leave? My enlistment will be up in ten days, Mr. Secretary. As soon after that as possible. Very well. In the meantime, if there's anything we can do to show our appreciation of the work you've done here, let me know. Thank you, sir. I can think of nothing. What was that? Now that, sir, was a peculiar instrument known as the sousaphone which is not only unique, but in the opinion of the young man who plays it, indispensable. I suspect he was reminding me that if he also could be discharged... He'd like to go with you? Uh, yes, sir. You'd like to have him? With certain misgivings, yes, sir. 
How about it, Major? Do you think we can spare this indispensable young man? Well, if that sound he just made is an example of his ability as a musician, I think we might very well make an exception in his case. Then, by all means, let us do so. Thank you, sir. That will be all, Susan. Thank you, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. Before beginning our auditions, let's be sure that we understand each other thoroughly. This is to be no ordinary brass band, bound by outmoded precedents and traditions. Our job, our only job, will be to put on a good show, which means that if our audiences prefer turkey in the straw to Parsifal, we'll play turkey in the straw. And let there be no mistake about this. I should be the leader of this band, which means that if your interpretation of a score turns counter to mine, mine will prevail. Thank you, sir. <laughs> While ours will be a civilian organization, we'll live and work under what may strike you as military discipline. A great part of our time will be spent on tour both here and abroad. You will therefore accommodate your domestic arrangements to the demands of the band. In plain language, this means that under no circumstances will wives be permitted to travel with husbands. Now then, are there any questions? Huh? Very well, we'll take the cornets first. Will you kindly step on the stage, please, gentlemen? Thank you. Mr. Sousa. Yes? Excuse me, sir, but what about a singer with the band? What singer? Surely, sir, you're going to have a singer with the band. Am I? Surely, sir, if you're going to break precedents and traditions, you've got to be progressive. And how can a band be more progressive than by using singers? Of the fair sex, I take it, are not too unattractive to look at. Well, naturally not, sir. Hmm. You wouldn't by any chance have some candidate in mind for this progressive role. Come to think of it, sir, I have. I'll be right back. <laughs> Come on, Lil, he's crazy about it. I know that. exactly how crazy he is about it. You do? Yes, and I also know you lied to me again. Why, why he hadn't the faintest idea of hiring a singer for his band. Well, how do you know he hadn't? I listened through the crack in the door, that's how. You mean to say you've been eavesdropping? To every word you said. Oh. Here I, here I let you talk me into giving up a, a perfectly good job in Washington to come to New York, only to find out you hadn't even mentioned the subject to him. You didn't have to kick so hard. Oh, you haven't felt anything yet if this turns out to be another one of your wild goose chases. Ah, oh, Mr. Little. Good morning, Miss Becker. How nice of you to come for our tryout. We'll endeavor to get to you a little later on. Meanwhile, let me introduce you to Madame Estelle Liebling of the Metropolitan Opera, whom I engaged several days ago to sing with the band. Several days ago? Yes, in one of my more progressive moments. <laughs> How do you do? Uh, thank you, madam. Oh, yes, the cornets. Now, uh, what is your name, please? Uh, Herman Brotish. Herman Brotish. A passage of triple tonguing, please. It's all right, my dear. We'll talk about it later. Thank you, sir. That was very good. But what I really had in mind was something more like this. Care to try again. Whether it was triple tonguing on the trumpet or a simple roll of the timpani, Sousa had but one standard, the best. From all corners of the earth they were assembled. Such men as Arthur Smith, solo cornetist of London's elite Coldstream Guard, Henry Koch, America's great French horn player, 
a youthful Arthur Pryor, trombonist, who a few years later would lead his own distinguished band, Monsieur Jambon, bassoonist of the Paris Conservatory, John S. Cox, Scotch flutist, Richard Messenger, oboist, Herr Schmidt, bass drummer and timpanist from the Garde du Corps of Berlin, all coming together at the opening of the Great World's Fair in Chicago to form the most famous band the world has ever known, Sousa's Band. Sousa's first grand tour with his own band, the first of many grand tours, which would take him and his band to almost every city and hamlet in America, and eventually to almost every country in the world, and which would win for him the title, The March King.
Nanino, 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 Nice and round and old signorina. Nanino, 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 no, 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 no. Where do you think you are going? Oh. If you're not prepared to do as I tell you, why do you bother coming here at all? I've been wondering about that myself. Oh, wicked, ungrateful girl. Wait till I tell Mr. Sousa how he's been rewarded for all the time and the money he's wasted on your lesson. You won't have to tell him. I'll tell him myself. Ooh. Hey, why are you through so early? I'm not through so early. I'm through for good. How's that? I'm tired of trying to make myself over into something I'm not. From now on, if you or anybody else doesn't like the way I sing, you don't have to listen. Well, who said anything about I'm not liking the way... take lessons from now till doomsday, and I'd never be able to sing the sort of stuff that man wants me to sing. What sort of stuff? No, I know. Who does he think I am? Jenny Lynn? Corno me quel mio cor festi prima pal fi Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, Miss Becker is here to see you. Miss Becker? Oh, Lily, show her in. And bring another cup, please. Yes. Why, Lily, what a pleasant surprise. Hello, Mr. Susan. Mr. Susan and I were talking about you today. He's very pleased with the progress you're making. He... In fact, though it's still supposed to be a secret, he's planning to take you on his next tour. That'll be very nice, thank you. But I'll let him tell you that himself. Sit down. You sure I'm not intruding? I mean, if Mr. Sousa's Mr. Home... Sousa's upstairs in his study with his publisher. They'll probably be at it for hours. Well, thank you, Thelma. I always take cream, but if you'd prefer lemon... Oh, no, cream's fine. You're upset about something. What is it? Mrs. Sousa, how do you get to be a lady? A what? A lady, like you. Well, I, I don't know. I... I'd never thought about it. I, I'm not always sure I am a lady. Oh, yes, you are. How do you know? You never raise your voice or get mad. You... And you do. All the time. Well, what about Willie? Doesn't he think you're a lady? Not anymore. Why not? What happened? He kissed me. He did? He did. And what did you do? I slapped his face. Then I kicked him. Hard? Hard as I could. But, but that's not what's worrying me. It's that he knows I like being kissed. Oh, and you don't think a lady should like that? Not when she knows nothing can come of it, that, that she can't get married. But who says you can't get married? You know how Mr. Sousa feels about members of the band taking their wives on tour. And, and when I get married, I'm not staying home for anyone. Has it ever occurred to you that what Mr. Sousa doesn't know won't hurt him? As to being a lady. Unfounded, this is the last oh, call. If you don't like it, you'll get no more music of any kind from me. All I said was. I heard what you said. The best ballad I ever wrote in my life, too. Well, if you have to come through here shouting. I'm not that? shouting. Well, can't you see I'm busy? I'm busy, too. What do you suppose I'm doing? Now, what was I talking about? Oh, yes, as to being a lady. Isn't it really a matter of what goes on inside of you and not whether you raise your voice occasionally or get mad or like to be kissed. As a matter of fact, I know some grand ladies who like to be kissed. Indeed, they insist on it regularly. It's just being yourself that counts. So if you want my advice, I'd say the next time Willie kisses you, you forget all about slapping his face and just kiss him back. Hard? As hard as you can, and I'd waste no time finding an opportunity to do it either. That's what I did when Mr. Sousa first kissed me, and look where it got me. Come on, I'll see it for you myself just to prove oh, it. No, no, dear. No, Philip, Philip, that will oh. ruin everything. Philip! Philip! Do you 
rent boats. Boats? What do we want with boats? Do you? What does that sign say? Keep off the grass? Come on, Mary. 25 cents. Well, I'll be doggone. Hmm? I never would have believed it. Believed what? That you'd deliberately go to all of this trouble, douse yourself with a whole bottle of perfume just to get me to kiss you again. I didn't. Oh, yes, you did. I did nothing of the sort. You're crazy. I figured there was something fishy about you wanting to come up here to Central Park, hiring a boat when you know very well you've never been in a boat before in your life. That's not true, and, and I won't stand listen to another word. Take me back. No, it's all right. If that's what you want, I don't mind. I just as soon kiss you. Oh, don't you dare touch me. I'll kick you again. I'll kick you right out of this boat. Go ahead and kick. I'll just do you it by now. I didn't use a whole bottle of perfume. How much did you use? Half a bottle. Who cares? It worked, didn't it? Hey, I've got an idea. What? Why don't we get married so as we can keep on doing this? When? I don't know. The sooner the better. Oh, Willie, that's wonderful. But we can't. Who says we can't? You know Mr. Sousa's rule about wives traveling with the band. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. No, it's all right. Mrs. Sousa told me he's going to take me on his next tour anyway, and, well, everyone knows the rule only says husbands can't take their wives. There's nothing about wives taking their husbands. Anyway, what he doesn't know won't hurt him. permission, we will now play the Washington Post March. The tune with which you have chosen to introduce your new dance, the two-step. A dance which, I am reliably informed, is going to knock Mr. Strauss's waltzers into a cocked hat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Lily Becker and Monsieur Bonnet. dance the two steps.
Bellis. May I have the pleasure of this dance? Oh, thank you, Mr. Sousa. I'd be delighted. Blakely, can't whatever's agitating you wait until I finish dancing with my wife? Uh, this telegram, it's from John Purvis, manager of the Cotton States Exposition in Atlanta. It says we're canceled. Really? Does he say why? The other two fans they've had haven't drawn ten cents. What are we going to do? We're going to inform Mr. Purvis that, like Caesar, Sousa expects him to render unto Sousa that which is Sousa. After which it might be advisable to get in touch with our friends in Atlanta and wait for the fur to fly. Right. Come here, we're missing the best part of the dance. Attend to that right away, Blakely, please. Mr. Little. Oh, Mr. Sousa, nice dance, isn't it? Yes, very nice indeed, but the music sounds a little thin. That's only because you're not conducting it, sir. Ha-ha. Ha-ha. Upon my word, ma'am, I've never danced. So charming and graceful a two-stepper. And upon mine, sir, I've never danced with so charming and flattering a liar. Who's in that drawing room down there? You mean the one the lady who sings in your band said? That drawing room right there. Yes, sir, that's the one I mean. Miss Lily's. You sure of that? Why, yes, sir. I just made up her birth about ten minutes ago. Do you want to talk with her? No. No, no, thanks. No, it's all right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Susie. Good, Good night. night. Good night. I just saw. I'd say a ghost. Worse than that. I've never been so shocked in my life. Why, that boy's been just like a son to me. And that girl. What boy, dear? What girl? Willie Little and Lily Becker. Right under our very noses, too. And after all the trouble I've gone to to prevent just this sort of thing. What are you talking about, dear? What sort of thing? Uh, you'll never believe it, Jenny. I hesitate even to mention it, but something has to be done. I just saw him slipping into her room with my own eyes. Really? What's the youth of this country coming to? You mean you condone such conduct? I'm highly in favor of it. Jenny. He's been slipping into her room for weeks now. What? And why not? After all, they're married. Married? Yes, dear, till death do them part. But that's impossible. They know how I feel about husbands and wives going on tour together. Well, that's why you mustn't let on you suspect a thing. Oh. Next time, just look the other way. Sure no one saw you come in here? I didn't come in here. I snuck in here. Well, that's what I don't like, all the sneaking business. Maybe we ought to tell Mr. Sousa. Uh-uh. That's part of the fun. Well, suppose he finds out. We can always say I was walking in my sleep. You mean you'd lie to Mr. Sousa after he's been so wonderful to both of us? Well, listen, Mr. Sousa's got other things to worry about besides us. He does notice little things like... Oh, so you call being married to me a little thing. Oh, oh! oh where's it hurt? Oh. Hi, I'm sorry. Oh, my ankle. Oh. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have jumped. If it'll make it feel any better, go on and kick me.
morning, Mr. Purvis. Morning, Colonel. And how are things going, huh? Kind of slow. Frankly, I'm sorry I ever got mixed up with this job. Too bad you had to cancel Sousa's band. Things might be different. Now listen, Colonel. Brass bands don't draw flies, especially brass bands from up north. Excuse me, Colonel, I got a heap of things to do inside. You go right ahead. me to read a sample of the sort of programs you may expect to hear inside this building. Overture to William Tell by Rossini. Song Dixie. Waltz, <laughs> The Blue Danube by Strauss. Song Dixie. <laughs> King Cotton March by Sousa. Song, Dixie. I am further authorized to state that all encores will be Dixie. Thank you, sir. Before retiring to the ballroom for our first concert, we would like, with your permission, to play one more selection. Colonel Randolph tells me it's long been a source of satisfaction here in the South that on the night of General Lee's visit to General Grant at Appomattox, the Marine Band in Washington, of which I later had the honor to be leader, marched to the White House to serenade President Lincoln. On this occasion, one of jubilation for the North, of defeat and despair for the South. Mr. Lincoln asked for only one tune, that which you have just heard, Dixie. In return for that compliment, we will now play, assisted by the Stone Mountain Church Choir of Atlanta, another tune which has come to be identified almost exclusively with our late president.
fabulous years were beginning, and as he went up and down the country, back and forth across the seas, a seemingly endless flow of tunes, marches, ballads, overtures gushing from his fertile brain, the whole world seemed bent on doing Sousa honor. From England came the Victoria Medal, from France the Palm of the Academy, from Wilhelm of Germany, Franz Joseph of Austria, the Tsar of all the Russians. At home, cigars were named for him. Every vaudeville theater had its imitator. Press and public alike vied with each other to make his name a household word. Every birthday, a national event. Would you mind telling us how old you are today, Mr. Souza? Not at all. Like the young lady in Mr. Oscar Wilde's new play, I became permanently 35 as soon as I reached 40. <laughs> How did you ever decide to be a musician in the first place, Mr. Souza? When I was young, I had a fondness for rolling a ball around the floor. One day, a celebrated musician suggested to my father that music lessons would break me of this unfortunate habit. So I became a musician. <laughs> for you. What's that? Philip, come, look. Well, what is it, Jenny? Inside, boys, and have a piece of my cake. Yeah! Always knew that was Susa. Always progressing as he had promised to be. Forever seeking new and diverting ways of entertaining his vast and worshipful audiences. Gentlemen, it's quite possible that very shortly you'll be hissed out of the theater if indeed you're not hung from the nearest lamppost. But whatever happens, you will have the satisfaction of knowing that you acted strictly in the line of duty. I personally guarantee that each of your widows will receive a suitable pension.
from the Bronx to Staten Island. Love is now the latest style. Boys and girls exchange affections, coppers give the right directions, all the trolleys make connections, politicians hold elections when it's springtime in New York. took Broadway, but I was out to enjoy the sights. There was the Bowery ablaze with lights. I had one of the devils of nights. I'll never go there anymore. Oh, take my money and take my all, but spare my beautiful parasol. If you're after a kiss or two, then my answer is this for you. Don't you trifle, it's all in vain. Triflers end up with a ball and chain. Here comes the Navy, won't somebody save me? Oh, officer, rescue me now. The Bowery, the Bowery, to say such things and they do such things on the Bowery, the Bowery, we'll never go there anymore. <laughs> Baby, I love you. Every dolly has her swing. Every street is lover's lane. It's the season to be sparking lovers on the central parking when it's springtime. It's springtime. It's springtime in your Ladies and gentlemen, I have just been informed that at exactly 49 minutes past 9 o'clock this evening, the battleship Maine was blown up in Havana Harbor and sunk. Between two and three hundred officers and men are reported to have lost their lives in the explosion. While President McKinley has urged the people to remain calm, well-informed sources in Washington express the opinion that only a miracle can prevent war with Spain. The Army and Navy have both been ordered to be ready for any emergency. A call for volunteers is expected momentarily. I'm shaking already. John L. Sullivan's right. If, if Spain wants to fight, why doesn't she challenge somebody her own weight and get a reputation? I'll mention that if I run into any of them down in Cuba. Heaven forbid. In the meantime, we'll... Governor! Well, good morning, Willie. Lily, what are you doing here? Enlisting, sir. What are you doing? Well, they still have bands in the Marine Corps. Sure, sir, but I thought that you were too... Uh... Uh, that I was too old? Oh, no, sir. I just thought that... Uh, never mind. Whatever it is, you're wrong. Right. Well, hello, young fellow. You got the war fever, too? All right, now, don't hurry. I know what you're after. Let me see. Oh, sorry. 
Not a penny. Here you are, sir. Oh, thanks very much, Billy. Here you are, boy. Like spaghetti? Sure, we love it. Too much garlic. No, it's, it's fine. You want some more candy? No, thanks. If you want something else, you better order because we close 11 o'clock. Nothing else, thank you. We, we just want to sit here a little longer. I've only got a few more minutes. Hey, listen. Why don't you get married so you have some place to go? We are married. That's why we can't be seen together. Oh. You probably never write me. Only every day. I suppose we better go. Not yet. I'm going to kiss you. Just once. Then we're going. In here? In here. They don't get divorced and marry each other. Yes, Sousa was a volunteer too, but he was not to serve. A severe case of typhoid fever sent him to sea instead. There to write the music for De Wolf Hopper's new comic opera, El Capitan. But even at sea, there was a war to think about, and he. But let him tell in his own words what happened. Suddenly, as I paced the deck, I began to sense the rhythmic beat of a band playing within my head, ceaselessly playing, echoing and re-echoing the most distinct melody. Though I did not know it then, my brain band was composing my most popular march, not one note of which, once I had transferred it to paper, would ever be changed. That was splendid. Uh, Lily, may I speak to you a moment, please? Ask Mr. Hopper if you'd like to run through the El Capitan March again, will you? Yes. Right, Hello, Lily, dear. Hello, I have a surprise for you. I've just had a letter from Willie. From Cuba? Yes. 
Uh, let's go over there and find out what the young rascal has to say for himself. Hmm? Sit down, dear. Shall I read it, or would you rather read it yourself? It's for you you read it. Dear Mrs. Sousa, I'm writing to you instead of to Lily, because you know what a flibbity gibbet she is, and how she starts carrying on like a chicken with its head cut off at the least little thing. Lily, a flibbity gibbet? He's out of his mind. I guess you know more about the war back there than we do down here, but I thought I'd tell you about a little scrap we had at Cusco Well the other day, in case the newspapers didn't figure out it was big enough to write home about. Cusco Well was the enemy's only water supply, and naturally we wanted to get them out of there. So C Company and D Company, that's me, started out early one morning along with about 50 Cubans. It was only six miles from camp, but in this heat, it seemed like 60. Boy, was it hot, just like Washington in July. I don't remember that Washington was so hot in July. Oh, then you have a short memory, dear. Washington could be unbearable in July. Never mind. Go on, Jenny. Well, anyhow, it wasn't long before the Spaniards caught on to what we were up to and cut loose on us. Luckily, one of our gunboats, the Dolphin, was just offshore, and so we signaled them to start shelling. But I guess they must have got mixed up, because instead of shelling the enemy, they began shooting at us. Sergeant Quirk, who is one of the real heroes of this war, if you ask me, stood up in clear sight of everyone and wigwagged to them to cut it out, which they did. But not quickly enough, I guess, because that's when I got it. Now, he's all right, Lily, now don't worry. Uh, you read the rest of it, dear. I guess I'm the A number one lucky fellow of this war because I only got it in the knee when I might just as well have got it where it would be really bad. Anyhow, as I was telling the doc last night, if worse comes to worst and he does take it off, which he won't, one leg's enough for anybody who aims to sit around as much as I do from now on. Besides, like a fellow from West Virginia was telling me, you can't tell wooden legs today from the real thing. He says he's going to get a mahogany one so he can keep it polished up. But another fellow I know from Mississippi says that's crazy. Now, he's going to get himself a nice soft pine one so when he gets bored, at least he can do a little whittling. Tell Lily I said that if she starts bawling or gets any crazy ideas about coming down here, I'm going to head for the tall timbers. The thing for her to do now is to go on and be a big hit in that show because from now on, she's liable to have to support me. And I mean in the style I'm accustomed to. We should have told you we're married. Yes, we know. No. Almost from the beginning. That's been pretty difficult at times, I can tell you, not to let on. Do I finish? I hope you and Mr. Susan and the children are fine and that El Capitan's as good as everything else the governor's written, or better, if that's possible. Well, I guess this'll have to be about all now, as it's time for chow, and you know me and food. Love to all. Willie. Yes. Tell Lily I said howdy. Golly, that, uh, that dwarf hopper sure got a powerful voice, hasn't he? Yes, the war was over, and as from every war, men were coming home. The well and the strong, the sick and the wounded, the halt and the lame.
You can go right in, Mrs. Little. Hello. Mr. Little, wake up. You have company. Oh, what a coincidence. I was just dreaming about some of those senoritas in Cuba. When all of a sudden I look up and... guarantee this show. Usually just some of the fellas, kind of amateurish. We'll soon find out. Did you know about this? Of course, I don't have to tell everything I know, do I? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great privilege and pleasure to be here with you tonight. And with your permission, I'd like to play a new march which I've written especially for you men who fought this war. Unhappily, we are missing one musician, a young man who plays not only an unique, but an indispensable instrument in the band. By a strange coincidence, however, I understand that this young man is here tonight. I'm hoping he'll come up here and help his old friends out on this occasion. How about it, Willie? Go on, Willie. Hello, Willie. Hello, Mr. Susan. Can you still read music? I can read your music in my sleep. All right, come on up, young fellow. There's your old monstrosity waiting for you. Get over next seat. 